three teams per conference. Um, and there's like, well, there's only four conferences down. The Pac-12 is non-existent uh, as of July, right? Um, so your favorite to win the conference, the runner-up in the conference, and then a dark rider. Um, that's what I call it. But that's like what the dark horse, air quote, or unexpected team in that division. Um, so I'll make it easy for you. I'll, I'll, I'll try to go as fast as possible. In the SEC, obviously, I, you know, I'm a Longhorn fan. I'm a Longhorn. I'm going with the Longhorns. That's my college. Yeah, you know I'm saying that's my college team. That's my college home. I never, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I, I but I'm not going to go with them because realistically, it's their first year in there. There's um, Steve Starkeesian. Hey, there, there's some rebuilding going on, lost some players, uh, some key defensive linemen, Brian Murphy. I, I know you've seen him. He's gone. We needed him on our D line. I don't know if that's for sure. So that made that defense tick. I got to go with Ole Miss, the favorite to win the SEC this year. Um, I got to go with them, um, period. I just got to because they, the stats is there. Runner up in the conference, I'm going to go with Georgia. I'm going to go with Georgia to be the runner up behind um, Ole Miss, and then, and then I'll go with my Longhorns to be the unexpected team in the SEC to either, you know, win it all or whatever, but they're going to put in some work in there. So that's what I say with the SEC. Now, what you saying in the SEC, bro? Hey, hey, when Bama fans see this, hey, they're going to hey, they gonna light us up. <laughs> but I have to say three teams. We just got the runner-up and the winner, you know, um, different. I, I I mean, Georgia, to me, they, they, they still the favorite. All right. They got the most talent. Um, I think even with the addition of Kalen DeBoer, I think Kirby Smart right now with Nick Saban leaving, he is the best coach in the SEC. Mm -hmm. They, I'm looking at it, they're returning 15 starters. So it's like they lost some guys to the draft, but they returned a lot of guys. I got Ole Miss second. They've gone crazy in the portal. Jackson Dart returning. Lane Kiffin and some Miami fans may feel the way. Lane Kiffin, my favorite coach in college football. So um, they've done some things to address the defensive side of the ball, which I think that's what they've been lacking at. And the dark horse, I have to go with Texas. To me, it was also between Texas and Oklahoma. Um, I was leaning Oklahoma because I know that they're going to bring a defense. But then I stopped for a second. I said, wait a minute, Quinn Ewers is returning. Um they got another second portal window open. They've killed it in the recruiting, so that they, they, they got some guys leaving, but they got some guys coming back. So I think Sark with that offense that they have, you know, is gonna mm -hmm. is gonna be there. But I, I literally just kind of looking at it because this is actually harder to do because it's easy to just name some teams. But right. Dark Horse, I was really at Texas, Oklahoma, and like Auburn. Like, that's where I was at with it. And they even had LSU in there, but I was like, Ooh, I like that Auburn. I like Auburn. <laughs> they young team. They young, man. Auburn coming, though. Auburn coming. Yeah, LSU got to replace the quarterback. Um, but, yeah, Ole Miss got 13 guys returning. This is not including uh, Portal. Texas got 11 guys returning from a um, production standpoint. Georgia's returning 76% of the offensive production, 55% of the defensive production. Ole Miss, 71% offense, 52% defense. Texas is returning 74% of production and 66% on, on, on defense. The crazy thing about Texas, now that's, that's again, we don't want to belabor it too much, but we know Texas lost Jonathan Brooks. They lost yeah. And they lost Xavier Worthy, but they're still returning 74% of offensive production. That is absurd. That is absurd. What? Brian Murphy, man. It, I know. I, see, I, the D line, man. See, I like my big guys, man. And, and, and losing Brian, man, that hurt, man. I hurt on that D line, bro. That hurt. Yeah, it did. And not me, 70, but 74%, that is. That is absurd. That That's a winning recipe. I don't think nobody can stop him, um, uh, you know. But yeah. So we got to try to get through this. And uh, so when you talk in the Big 12, the Big 12, I'll let – going fast as I can. Let me see. All right, Big 12, real quick, real quick. And, and that's crazy. I didn't even – we didn't mention uh, Mizzou, Alabama, 
you know. Um, and those are two teams that right on the cusp, you know what I'm saying? Um A and M got a returning quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oklahoma. That's crazy. I mean, yeah, but all right, so I'm I'm gonna do the big twelve. We're gonna we're gonna say the ACC, right? For that, that's the, the last, the best for the last, right? All right, that's what we're gonna do. But um the big twelve, I gotta go with Utah winning the big twelve. Um the favorite, the, my runner up in the um Big Twelve would have to, and and this is gonna sound crazy to a lot of people out there, but I gotta go with Oklahoma State University, bro. I mean, I, I gotta go with them. Um, a, a lot of people say that they were a pass heavy team. Uh, the Big Twelve is, I, I know I called them trash before in the video, but look, doing my research on this division, on this conference, this conference is gonna be a lot better than what it used to be. Um, and look, hands down, y'all just did a video on them. They got the best fucking running back in college football returning. Like, you know what I'm saying? Who's going to stop that man? Ollie Gordon is a straight up monster running that ball. And we seen how effective running a ball can be in college football. And Look, Oklahoma, they might even put something on Utah. And then the team to watch for, it was hard because I think a lot, I think they're all like, they real close. There's a lot of teams that's real close as far as recruiting. And you get to look in that on paper right now. You know, we got to wait till the season start, but on paper right now, everybody's real close. They look good, right? So, um, you know, Colorado's one of the teams, and uh, that could have been there. I, I even think Baylor, right? Because I'm a big Daquan Finn fan. I think Daquan Finn is a lot better than what the large public – talk. I don't talk about this man from Toledo enough. He's from Detroit, Michigan. He's about that life. He grew up like that. He's a quarterback. He got the size. He went – he was in the MAC championship, y'all. Like, and he carried Toledo. But listen, all right, but anyhow – um, and he's at Baylor right now, and that quarterback position at Baylor just got a lot better. But I want to say West Virginia, man, West Virginia, man. Garrett Green is just they him. Um, if you talk about returning production, I know they missing some of the offensive linemen and stuff like that. But at West Virginia, man, look, they bought to put in that work, and they run the ball well. Their uh, running back was a freshman last year. I can't get his name off top of my head right now, but he's only a sophomore. They got two different one-two punches. Garrett Green can run the ball, pass the ball. I think West, and they got a decent defense returning some players. So look, West Virginia, man, they're definitely on um, my dark rider team in that Big Twelve. So my favorite, I got to go with Oklahoma State, right? Ollie Gordon, Bill. Okay. They are returning an absurd amount of guys. They're returning 20 guys from last year's team, 20, mm. which is the mm. most out of all of the teams that I selected. Mm. I, first, I have Kansas second, right? Again, may have the second best running back in college. Definitely. Yes, uh, Jalen Daniels returns. Uh, he got he got injured early in the season. He only played five games, but before he left, he had tossed five touchdowns uh, to one interception. So you get him back in the mix along with a, a potent run game. I think Kansas. Again, this is crazy to say, but we're, this is we're talking Kansas. They even with Jalen Daniels going down, they were still a nine win team last year. So I think that they're going to make a push. And then my dark horse, which again, this this again, over all four conferences, this was so hard because I was thinking, I said, like you, I was thinking like Baylor. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, what about Arizona State? Kenny, Kenny Dillingham, you know, the work that he and Dan Lanning were able to do at Oregon that first year, trying to get that offense together and what he was able to do, putting things together. I thought about Arizona, right? He may have the Best quarterback in the conference behind well, second best made behind Shadour with two potent weapons on the outside. Uh, but I settled with Iowa State. And I'm gonna tell you why I settled with Iowa State. Uh, Matt Campbell's a good coach, right? Um, they have 90% of their offensive production returning this upcoming year, they have 80% of their defensive production returning, which that goes to show me that this would be a veteran team. This, this is a team that has a lot of guys that have played a lot of mm-hmm. football that produce, not just were on the roster. 
Um, and I think this could be the year because people are trying to begin. Matt Campbell has been a hot name for maybe some NFL jobs and even some other collegiate jobs and stuff like that. So I do think that this may be the year that Matt Campbell is able to, you know, make some mm-hmm. noise. They dark horse, but I still got Oklahoma State and Kansas as my favorites. Okay. All right. Hey, hey, I ain't mad at that, bro. I ain't mad at that, bro. I like I like that, bro. I I really do. I like that. And, and and I just did a video on Devin Neal, man. He's unreal, man. The way he, man, listen. <laughs> the way he ran the ball, man, is unreal, man. He go in. He goes in. Who might have put on this, too? Who? Which one of the team win each one of these conferences? Oh, okay. <laughs> I got all right. So my next one, right? So so the next one I'm gonna roll with is uh all right. So we got the Big Ten. Who I think we're gonna uh, probably go the same thing with this, but the Big Ten just got a whole lot better. But I I got swayed a lot with the Big Ten. Um, I think that for some reason, right? Oregon and the moves they have made, they probably had the best receivers um arguably in college football um you can argue that right yeah. right correct me if i'm wrong yeah. Yeah. um you could uh, their quarterback room is outstanding yes. um and so and in, in, in short y'all just trying to get through this so we can get to john calipari right i'm going Oregon, Ohio State to be the runner up. And then I'm going unexpected team, unexpected, unexpected. Nobody's expecting them to do anything. Um, Wisconsin. I was thinking Indiana too, because I because I like Curtis Ryuk. I like Curtis Ryuk, and I like what uh Kurt Signetti's doing, what he did with uh James Madison and all that. Indiana, they're, they're they're close, but I think Wisconsin is just a little bit better than that. And um, he's going to have to adjust to the Big Ten life. So Wisconsin unexpected, Oregon winning it, the Big Ten, and Ohio State being a runner-up. I mean, we got the same thing, right? I got Oregon as the favorite, not because of their offense, but because, yeah. right, this will be the third year. Uh, under Dan Landing and Tosh uh, Lapoy on defense. Um, they are returning 70% of production on defense. I think that defense probably will be the best in the Big Ten, even better than Ohio State, even though Ohio State did go pick up a Caleb Downs and they do have – they recruit very well. But I just think this is the year that uh, Dan Landing is able to, to, to kind of get it over, to get across the finish line, um, kind of – in my opinion, kind of similar fashion to his – um, mentor and Kirby Smart, um, okay. and just kind of getting it there. Um, obviously, like I said, you know, Ohio State's two and Wisconsin is three. And I and the thing about Wisconsin to me, again, I'm I'm a defensive guy. Um, Luke Fickle is a defensive genius, right? Yeah, the defense together. Um, Phil Longo, I think second year there, he's gonna you know he's gonna be able to do some things that he's able to do. Um, and yeah, like I said, I think those would be the top three teams in the in the Big Ten next year. I know some Michigan fans may feel the way, Penn State fans may feel the way, like you say, Indiana fans, Nebraska fans. Again, like I say, this dark horse thing, th- th- that's funny though, don't you think? It's funny because it's harder to find a dark horse than it is yeah. who we feel like is the the number two because yeah. the dark horse is a team that we feel like, well, hey, you know, a couple of things go right. Yeah. I can be number one, you know what I'm saying? But it's right. to me right. it's hard doing it. But it was easy to do it kind of here because I, you know, I said Wisconsin, the third team I followed this year. So I was picking them regardless. Oh, okay. So I mean, but look, I mean, so yeah, so I learned a lot. And then in Wisconsin, man, they I think, yeah, they they right there, man. I thought, you know, um let's let's see what Matt Rule does does in Nebraska. Uh they right there. They right there. Um, but uh, okay, so last but not least, we got the ACC. Your favorite to win a conference, running up in a conference in your dark horse. Um, 
Now, like you said, I want to start with my dark horse first, right? Because when you when you we talk about Pittsburgh culture, right? You talk about Pittsburgh culture, the pit they beat in Louisville, you know, sorry the whole season. And you like, man, Pittsburgh, they just got this culture where they don't quit. They can be two and eight. You can go in there playing them, but you better be on your A game playing Pittsburgh at all times because you might drop that game. If you're not, it don't suck. Um, they develop talent well out there in Pittsburgh. Uh they just do. Um, did you just take a shot though? Huh? Feel like you just took a shot. You just, yeah. You just took yeah, cause you just said your season could be going good and they could be two and eight and you roll in there and they beat you. You know, cause that's what happened to us in 2017. So I just <laughs> didn't even know what type of time you're on right now. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I, I I said Louisville. I'm talking about Louisville. I'm talking about okay. Louisville. Last year, they did that to Louisville last year. So I'm just saying, though, you just talk about the culture and stuff, like you know. Yeah, I mean, that's that's that's, that's what Pittsburgh do, man. Pittsburgh, oh, okay, oh, okay. So that was the type of time, yo. Oh, okay. Pittsburgh, 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 are just they just one of them teams, man, that will beat you and you when you least suspect it. So you got to be on your A game playing Pittsburgh, no matter if they rebuild and no matter how sorry their record is, how how how. You know, so yeah, I could go with them as unexpected, but I don't think that that's gonna go that way. I just want to talk about them for a little bit. Um, show some love to the pitch. Besides Cameron Lindsay, my young man coming up out of uh Aliquippa, gonna be a monster. You know, going to he went to the same high school uh Darrell Revis went to. But anyway, um, I gotta go with SMU. Preston Stone is going to shock uh the ACC. I think he's gonna come up in there, put in some work. My runner up. In the ACC, and, and look, and, and no, no joke, man. My runner up, I gotta go. And people think it's gonna be something different, right? They all think I'm gonna go with this team. I'm going with NC State to be my runner up in the ACC. Why? Because I did when I did that watch day spring game, and I did that review on that. I just, I, I like that culture. I just like the way everybody was given maximum effort. The, the receivers, the offensive line, the way they running that ball. Um, it was just crazy to me. If you seen that spring game, then you'll be like, oh my goodness. There wasn't a running back that, that wasn't toting right. Um, gr- you know, Grayson McCall going up there. I think they're going to have a decent season. And then my favorite to win the uh, ACC, man, I got to go rock with the Hurricanes because you know what time it is, dog. I got to rock with the Hurricanes to win the ACC. Um, Cameron, d- despite uh, where everything's going on, and I know a lot of people overhype what's going on and, and and they don't evaluate the, the correct way or whatever. But look, man, Cameron Ward, man, is, is excellent at what he does. I, even though I like Jacari Brown, I think that they have a good situation going on over there, a great situation going on over there. Actually, in my eyes, let me put that in that way, because, you know, we don't want Cameron Ward to go down, but if it did, Jacari Brown coming in and they ain't missing a beat. Miami's primed to take this over. Um, DJ Ugly Game in, in Florida State, that's where they went wrong at. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, so, um, yeah, man, I, I, I got to roll with the U, man. I got to roll with the U for my favorite to win the ACC, dog. That's that's me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I had to be a homer on this. I had to be. I got us winning it because, you know, we got too much money invested in this roster not to win, you know. That's, right. that's what I, about that. I don't care about nothing else. I don't think nobody else in the ACC has spent as much money on their roster as we have. So that's my reason for doing it. I got Florida State as the runner-up, and I'll say this. You brought up DJU, but one thing I will say, again, like I say, I'm a, I tell everybody I'm a football fan first. And then I get into the whole fan base, you know, beefing with another fan base. But I okay. said Florida State and Mike Norvell, they have constructed an offense from when he first got there. That offense is not solely dependent on their quarterback having to be the game savior. They have insulated. They did a fantastic job insulating Jordan Travis, and I don't. And I feel like they will do the same thing for DJ DJU. They will insulate it. They will maximize what he's good at. They will minimize what he struggles at. Uh, they may, and I, I hate to say this, but I mean I understand the situation that we have in Coral Gables, but Florida State may actually be returning the best defense in the ACC. Man, stop that, man. You know the hurricanes is, cuz, man. We're going to stop that front. I ain't going to let you get up on here and talk that about the hurricanes <laughs> like that, cuz. Hey, listen, I can't be biased. I can't be biased. Nah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you, man. 
But I, I think I think they I think they will I think they'll be the run up. And then for the dog course, I gotta go with Louisville, right? I think Brom, what he was able to do at Louisville that, that first year, they've been active in the transfer portal. Uh I think to be honest with you, they <laughs> if he's able to get a a solid quarterback in there or he can help you know, minimize the exposure that the current quarterback has, I think they're going to make some noise. They were able to pick up two guys from the University of Miami, Jaleel Skinner and Don Chaney. I think those two guys are probably going to go to Louisville and, and play pretty well. Uh, but I got Louisville as my dark horse. Um, nice. I think Jeff Brom and the staff that they've assembled up there, they got a good staff assembled. All right, all right, man. Hey, y'all, that's 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 our um AC, that's our AC, our picks for the conference and um power four football. Now it is, um, you know, that's our picks, our dark horses. We wind that. Make sure y'all hit that like button for us. Um, even if y'all watching for a couple seconds, just hit it and just move on, do what you do. <laughs> uh, all right, man. But we finna go ahead and roll into the 